Hello, and welcome back to Firesons Gaming. My name is Ben, and today we're continuing on with Suzerain. So last time we left off, um, we had a meeting with our advisors about uh, potential changes to the Constitution. And then we signed off on uh, basically what we wanted the bill to be for the Constitutional Reform. Um, so we did agree to make some changes based on uh, feedback from members of our party, and I assume some other people who were involved in the, dis the, the discussion. So we'll see what happens with that before we submit a final draft to um, be voted on. And then after that, we moved over to Lockhaven for a business discussion uh, over a fancy meal um, with Simon and a couple other people. And that one kind of shady dude from before who was trying to bribe us into awarding his company the construction contract uh, was trying to pressure us into doing some other shady stuff. Um, like, I was kind of on board with a little of it, but he just kept pushing and pushing, and it just got way too much, so I basically just told him to screw off, so who knows? That might turn out to have been a really bad idea, but that's okay. We're going with it. So today, looks like we've got a couple of um, couple of reports, maybe just the one. Oh, there's another one. A couple reports, a couple of newspapers here to start off with. So we're going to go ahead and start off with the newspaper like usual. So coming from the Whole Sword Post, a uh, bill on the rights of workers being drafted. The Grand National Ass Assembly of Swordland will vote on a bill on Thursday to protect workers' rights in Swordland that supporters are calling the most ambitious pro-labor legislation in decades, and which one USB representative has dismissed as the worst bill in the Assembly. Uh, the Workers' Protection Act has strong support from both PFJP and NFP, as well as labor leaders. The bill is a result of a bipartisan effort from the leading figures of the PFJP, as well as Ministry of Health, led by Pascal Bennywell. It was proposed to the Assembly by Representative Alban Clavin from the USP. The Workers' Protection Act amends the Labor Act by establishing a minimum wage of 2.5 rand per hour, and adding guidelines on overtime work, as well as safety and protection guidelines. It also extends the rights of the workers to all migrants, acknowledging their rights as workers in Sortland. Nice. The bill also makes it illegal for corporations to force workers to do unpaid overtime work. Also nice. Companies who fail to abide by the rules established with the bill will be heavily fined by the government and may be forced to face legal action. Some estimates suggest costs for these firms would increase by 50% if they have to treat workers according to the proposed laws. Uh, despite the bill coming from the governing USP, it faces a huge opposition inside the party. However, with the support of the PFJP and NFP, the bill has a high chance of passing the assembly. Nice, okay. Alright, sort of in today. Rain leading promised reforms. Not sure why this one's gray. Huh, interesting. Whatever, we'll go with this one. Uh, yeah. Rain leading promised reforms. Our sources informed us that the plan is underway by the government to start the drafting of the reform package. Finally, we seem to have a president who pursues something significant in the early days of his term. President Rain is already proving that he is the right man for the job as rumors circulate about successful talks about a future proposal in collaboration with important figures from the PFJP. This is a significant development that shows that this administration is listening to the will of sort of citizens. We hope that, once the constitutional changes are approved, it'll be the start of a new era for our country towards a bright future. Okay, I think I read that one last episode, so I must have just accidentally skipped over this one. So, whatever, let's do it now. President meets with Business Council. Our sources have reported that yesterday, President Rain had a meeting with the Business Council behind closed doors in Lockhaven, which later continued with a dinner in a five-star Asteria restaurant with leading figures from the Council. The agenda on the meeting was not disclosed, and the contents of the meeting remain a secret. But it can be expected that President Rain has discussed the future economic plans of his administration, as well as listening to the concerns of the leading industry figures. The outcome of the meeting will hopefully arrive quickly with positive developments and more transparency compared to today. Okay, so I think those two just got mixed up somehow. Alright. Morbell Mine Disaster. 112 dead. Uh, oh yeah, we read the report on that earlier, uh, last episode, so this is just an actual news story about it. Disaster hit Morbuild last night when one of the main support shafts in the Morble coal mine collapsed, trapping many coal miners inside. 
collapsing structures also started an underground fire, turning the sky black with ash and sorrow in Morbell today. Jeez. As reported by the government, the current death toll sits at 112 dead, with many other miners still trapped inside. Rescue operations are continuing without any sleep. Investigators have told us that this might have happened due to the neglect of the Nadam mining group. Families of miners and people of Morbell showed up in protest at the site of the disaster. Incidentally, the workers' rights bill that was being drafted in the assembly for the past few months comes too late. The eyes of Swordland are now turned to President Rain to see his decision on the bill. Yeah, I mean, that bill sounds pretty good. I think we're supposed to be able to get a look at it before we approve it, but we'll see what happens. But still, that's that's pretty awful. Yeah, especially having a, uh, a fire down there in the coal mine. I mean, that can get pretty bad pretty quick. I don't remember where it is. It's, uh, like on the east coast of the U.S., like Virginia or something. There's a coal seam fire that's been burning underground since, like, the 70s or something. It's just, like, so far in there that they can't do anything about it, so it's just going to burn for, well, indefinitely, really, until it eventually burns through that entire coal seam, which could take, like, who knows how long. Uh, okay, all right. Well, enough of my terrible uh, history lesson here. Let's take a look at uh, the report from Ribble. Uh, oh, nice. Back to that, uh, like, lunch hall food poisoning that killed a dozen kids or whatever. Uh, school poisoning connected to Blutish Woman. Vilma Osir, who was working at the school kitchen, was apprehended with connections to last week's school cafeteria poisoning in Ribble. The act was found to be politically motivated as the perpetrators are connected to the banned Blutish Freedom Party. Asir is suspected to have been an active member of the Blutish Freedom Front since the start of this year. She has been sentenced to 60 years in prison. Alright, heading north to Arvory. Uh, we got a car bomb. Man, there's like no nice news here. A car parked in an agno sordish dominated neighborhood in the outskirts outskirts of Arvory has exploded. Arvory police reported that there were no casualties or injuries. The initial investigation found that the car was rigged with a timed bomb. No perpetrator has been found connected to the incident so far. Further investigations are ongoing and details have not been shared with the public. Alright, well, at least nobody died that time. Got all these attacks that are constantly killing people all over the country. Oof, alright, this one's going to be tough. Uh, so moving on to the main story beat here. Budget allocation of the government of Swordland. Alright. The preparations for the government budget were finished. Most of the cabinet gathered in the White Room for the important occasion. Oh man, there's a lot of people here. Okay. Nearly half a year had passed since my inauguration. The cabinet looked overworked. Wow, it's been six months already. Alright. Uh, welcome everybody. Great to see you. Hello. Mr. President. Sadly, Peter Vectren, Gus Manja, and David Vichy won't be attending this meeting. They are working on the upcoming trade agreements with Valen and Agnolia. May the Lord be with them. Ciara gave a barely dis uh, disguised eye roll. Did you just roll your eyes at me, young lady? If I did, it's because religion is no place to govern budget meeting. Agreed. I was merely expressing my wishes for a successful trade deal. Freedom of expression must be protected at all costs, must it not, Miss Morgan? Uh, actually, in this case, I agree with Sia, Miss Walla. Sierra flashed an appreciative smile. According to Sorbonne's laws regarding separation of church and states, uh... She broke off as she noticed that Simon, Lucian, and I, Yosef, were looking at the three female ministers in stony silence. Ladies, let's save the extraneous chit-chat for afternoon tea. Uh, kind of a dickish statement there, but he's not wrong. But yes, please leave your religion at the Maroon Palace gates, Miss Groff. Lilius was about to utter a word, but a loud cough from Simon interrupted the silence in the room. 
Simon started loudly shuffling some documents around. All eyes turned to the Minister of Economy. Nice, okay. Being, being a little passive aggressive there, I like it. Alright, let's begin, Mr. Hole. Gladly. Today is a big day. We must prioritize our spending wisely in order to achieve the goals we set as a government. We're maintaining enough political support, if I may add. Promises were made during the election. There are three options regarding the budgeting of the four main branches of the government. It's either we increase, maintain, or decrease the funding. Well, that's kind of obvious, but... Increasing will result in an improvement of the branch, which will unlock new policy options. Maintaining will keep the funding, resulting in no visible change. Decreasing causes a loss of efficiency in that branch. Can we rely on the private sector to support us? I'm sure we can do that to a certain extent in some branches, like education and health. Universal healthcare system must be protected, not be tainted by private greed or interest. We need to be considerate when making such grand choices that have ripple effects. We have to be careful as to what we fund, so we have resources remaining for another investment project. We have to keep true to the election promises. Our people voted for us because of the promises we made. As much as we realistically can. If we fail at improving our economy, the promises don't mean much in the big picture. Before we begin our discussion, there's one more thing that I want to voice my opinion on. As we manage the government budget, we are obviously able to go into debt to invest in different branches. Although debt is a possibility, under these circumstances it would dent our financial system, worsening the economic crisis if we push it too far. A point for me as well to everyone before the discussion. Given the current state of the country, the economic situation is a political priority right now, more so than ever. This budget will also be applicable to our entire term, and is very critical that we plan correctly. Let's begin then. Which branch should we discuss first? Uh, well, let's just start off with number one. Let's talk about healthcare. Our healthcare system is vast and provides free services to most of our citizens. However, the quality of our health services is far worse in low-income and rural areas. Therefore, I think we should receive more funding to address this disparity. I agree. I have recently begun an investigation into healthcare in Narbo, and the numbers are not good. If we don't increase spending on health services, we at least need to maintain it. Otherwise, we are putting lives at risk. We have just started a new analysis on what would happen if a pandemic struck Solvund. According to the results, if our healthcare facilities remain in the current state, the death toll would be unimaginable. I am not even talking about the damage to the economy. This is a matter of life and death, Mr. President, and it should be treated as such. That is indeed worrying. We should try to fix whatever we can as the government. Alright, uh, let's discuss law enforcement. I would like to have an increase in the funding of law enforcement to increase the size of police force and raise salaries. We have so many internal threats to tackle, and I am already stretching my units far too thin with the limited resources allocated to me. Nia cleared her throat. <clears throat> law enforcement is certainly a high priority. However, I feel tackling internal corruption is of far higher importance than increasing our police presence. Projecting the funds to my department would solve the problem at its roots. If corruption is still rampant, all the police in the world won't help us. We need a specialized anti-corruption police unit, which we could create if the funds were directed to me. I agree with Miss Morgan. We should not reward a structure that is responsible for an ever-increasing number of human rights violations. Additionally, corruption is the reason of our government inefficiencies. It needs to be tackled. Yeah, if the police are there to serve and protect the people who saw them, Miss Walda. That is exactly what we were doing. More funding will allow us to take care of our police forces. It is quite a simple choice, given the current status of the country. Uh, I agree with Nia. We need real solutions for real problems like corruption. Alright, uh, well, I guess it's time to hear about uh, the opinions of the military. Yeah, what is there to hear about? I already voiced my opinions. Romberg is coming whether we like it or not. If not this year, next year. If not next year, the year after that. Mr. President, you and I have a shared responsibility to protect this nation from its enemies, and I intend to do so until my very last breath. 
I will say this with certainty. If Rombart doesn't make a move against Swordland in two or three years, my name is not Josef Lancia. Josef was beginning to lose control of the volume of his voice. There could be no argument against increasing the budget for our army when there's an enemy on our doorstep waiting for us to make one wrong move. Anyone who thinks otherwise is a fool. Uh, Mr. Lancia. Uh, right, what am I theatric, sir? But this is a serious matter. The future of our country is up to you, Mr. President. Well, here's an argument. The armed forces does nothing but eat away financial resources just for our people while stoking fears for an upcoming war. The issues with Rumberg can be solved diplomatically. What kind of message are we sending to them and the whole world if we suddenly start ramping up our military budget? That we are ready to defend our nation, Miss Walder. Exactly. Yeah, sorry, I agree with Ciara. We need to be as diplomatic as possible. And last but not least, what about education? Our education system is lacking, not only in funding, but also in modern curricular principles. Our outdated curriculum is wasting our youth. That is the reason why I advocate two things. An increase of the budget to improve access to education in rural areas, and a new education reform. To be honest, Sorland is lacking compared to Arcasia and United Continent when it comes to education levels. The backload of any country is its people, and we need to protect our future. We need to ensure the new generation is as well educated as their counterparts in more modern countries. <laughs> Nonsense. Sorland is still here because of this very system that you insult. How can you insult a system that teaches our sons and daughters the principle of national identity and pride? We won't be compared to other countries. Sorland is Sorland. I agree with Lilith. Sorland is Sorland. Some nice nationalistic nonsense here. I must remind you that we promised that we are going to focus on education during our campaign. Yeah, I agree with Ciara. It's high time we invest in education and enact reforms. Eh, very good talking points from everyone. Well then, time to make a decision on the budget has come. Consider it with care, Mr. President. Simon placed a sack of papers on my table. Okay. Alright. Turn budget. Health. The healthcare system of the country was at a crossroads. Since the 1940s, the difference in quality between urban and rural hospitals was getting worse, and the average life expectancy dropped. The situation was becoming relatively dire. Your final decision. Upon selecting one of the options below, you will assign an irreversible order. Please think carefully, because there's no going back this time. Hmm, okay. Well, I know what I want to do. So I guess I'm just going to go for it and hope it's right. So we're going to increase the healthcare budget. Uh, education. The education system in Swordland was overburdened. The lack of schools, teachers, and even equipment in certain areas caused massive gaps in what was otherwise known as one of the most robust systems around a decade ago. Alright, so as much as I don't want to do this, um, I'm going to maintain and hope that there's a way to um, like try to privatize the uh, education a little bit. Law enforcement. Increased crime, lawlessness, and a new wave of immigration has pushed many elements of the law enforcement to their limits. Judges at courts are barely keeping up with the backlog of cases. On the other hand, the police are overburdened. We're going to have to maintain law enforcement as well. Actually... Oh, it says that, but I can totally go back, so, okay. Let's increase the law enforcement budget for right now. Military, we're actually going to decrease. Okay, yeah, that... That's fine, So I'm hoping I can use some privatization on the education system. I'm not a big fan of it, but... We're trying to keep our budget 
somewhat in the black. That's going to be the best way to do it, unfortunately. Your promises will be remembered and they will have consequences. Are you sure about your decisions, Mr. President? Yes, we're going to go for it. All right. I had finished allocating the government budget to the satisfaction of some cabinet members and the dismay of others. They and I knew this would define a significant part of our term. Hmm. It looks like we have a balanced budget with no deficit or surplus. Not bad. Not bad at all. Agreed. Well then, let's start with law enforcement. Nia and Lilius were both smiling. Yeah. Thank you for this decision, Mr. President. I knew you would see reason on this, considering our internal security threats are at an all-time high. Eh. I'll still disagree with Miss Graff on how the money ought to be spent, but the increased funding is certainly a step in the right direction. Any statements on the matter, sir? Law enforcement is a key branch that needs a greater budget due to the increased threats and need for security. We will make good use of these new resources and fight crime, terrorism, and subversives. Justice will be served in this nation, having more support is a step in the right direction. Let's hear the Minister of Education. Sarah was eager to comment. Keeping the same budget will just result in the same problems. However, I prefer this over decrease. I'll try to reform the system with my own resources. Our future depends on our children. Education is the first step in the fight against ignorance. Your expertise and passion should enable you to make the necessary changes for improvement. Thank you for your confidence in me, but without extra funding we'll have to make sacrifices, and our system will see the consequences. Yeah, unfortunately. Like I said, hopefully we can figure out how to uh, get some of that private money coming in and help the education system. Alright, uh, the military is next. Sarah clearly wasn't finished, but didn't interject. Yosef chimed in. This is a disgrace. Lumberg is at our doorstep, and the armed forces already have a launch list of problems. This was a grave mistake that we will surely pay for in time. Lucian seemed as if he was about to say something, but looked down at his notepad when Yosef eyed him. Concessions had to be made with the military budget. The priorities have changed. Is there a higher priority than our national security? I doubt it. Yosef leaned back in his chair. Yeah, okay. Let's hear from Mr. Bennywall. Uh, thank you, sir. This health budget increase will help me to focus on improvements. Our people will now be safer than ever. I'm also planning to tackle issues like the lack of rural hospitals and the recently worrying numbers of maternal deaths. Yeah, welfare must remain a priority for our term. There's no other way around it. Yep, healthcare is very important for us, and as we move forward, it'll improve drastically. It feels invigorating to have the weight of the governments behind my goals. That covers all branches. Each minister will approach you with their respective policy quests and expectations over the next year. Thank you for your time and participation in this significant moment. The meeting is concluded. Regardless of what happened, I wouldn't be here without you. Don't forget that we are a team. Ministers bid their farewell, some excitedly, others dejectedly. The cabinet slowly dispersed out of the White Room. The budget for a term was concluded. Hey, alright. Journal here, just updating. Ah, uh, yeah, that's just taking note of our decisions there. Okay, well, let's take a look at the news and our updates here. Looks like there's just the one report. So, yeah, let's start the newspapers. Whole Sword Post. 1954 Swordish Government Budget. After marathon 18 hours of negotiations, the Swordish governmental budget for the current term has been finalized. The government envisages spending around 27 billion ren next year, almost 16 billion more than this year. The 1954 budget sees the first measures for more internal security being introduced. While the details of the allocation of the increased security funding is not yet clear, it is expected that the Ministry of the Interior and the Ministry of Justice will both benefit from the increase. 
Minister of the Interior, Mrs. Groff, has expressed her gratitude for the increase in the law enforcement budget, saying that this increase will help us bring and maintain the peace we've all been waiting for. The Ministry of Health, one of the smaller ministries in Sorland, will also see its budget grow more than expected, which will especially benefit the quality of the health care services around the country. Minister of Health, Mr. Benny Wall, has expressed his gratitude for the increase in the health care budget, saying that this increase will benefit everyone in Sorland. Alright, Sorland today. Cuts to the military will help the economy. Which is kind of what I'm hoping for. Sorish armed forces have always asked for a bigger cut to maintain the military's ability to respond to problems. They were usually compensated by the previous governments. With the election of Tarkin sold, military budget has gone up and up ever since, thanks in part to an economic revival that began during his rule. The current economic crisis, however, is far deeper and will likely last longer. President Rain has seen that the Sordish General Staff and its overseers in the Grand National Assembly are coming up with the military's budget requests routinely, but the, ma the demand for it is never justified due to the military services growing accustomed to a lenient attitude toward giving them whatever they want. Finally, a reduction in the massive military spending comes during the country's economic meltdown. President Rain has already approved the reduction to the defense budget, which can be used to invest in the economy, which Sordland desperately needs. Despite criticisms from the Ministry of Defense, we believe that this decision will help the economy in the long term, as the already capable military forces of Swordland are no longer overfunded. That's pretty much what I was hoping for, because I remember our military has a massively overblown budget. So decreasing it probably won't hurt anything. At least from a you know budgetary standpoint. But increasing it like they said, the meeting would probably just be signaling uh, to our neighbors over here in Rumberg that we're gearing up for war. Which, I guess, on the one hand, could be a good thing because it's showing that, you know, we see their threats and we're responding to it. But they could also just be kind of posturing on the borders, trying to provoke us, and increasing the budget and gearing up for war could just give them the reason they need to invade anyway. Or I could be completely overthinking that, and since now we cut our budget for the military, they're going to invade and destroy the country, and we're going to get brutally murdered. But, you know, that's okay. We'll see how it goes. All right. On that happy note, let's go back to Whole Sword for a Reform Committee status report. We've seen Glad reported that so far they may have been able to get, in total, 87 signatures behind the proposal. Efforts are underway to increase the support and reach out to necessary members. Alright, well, I don't know how long it's been technically, like, in game time since we signed that. Or, you know, proposed it. 87's not bad. I think we needed 160, so we're a little over halfway there. So that's pretty good. Alright, and... Alright, now this video is going to be a little bit short, but we're at the end of the chapter the turn whatever you want to call it so i think i'm going to go ahead and call it good here for today um but yeah if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and as always thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you all next time